Hi everyone, it's Rain here from Rain's Kitchen and Garden. Today I'm in my kitchen making these delicious French baguettes. I'm going to show you how to make them, so stay tuned. These delicious French baguettes only have four ingredients. The first ingredient is bread flour. I have 700 grams of bread flour. That's approximately five and a third cups of bread flour in my bowl. I'm going to add to that 17 grams of salt. That's approximately two and three quarters of a teaspoon. I've also got 15 grams of active dry yeast. That's approximately three teaspoons of active dry yeast. I'm going to take a wooden spoon and mix all that up so it's well combined. I'm going to make a well in the center. And then I'm going to add 450 milliliters of room temperature water. That's approximately one and three quarter cups of room temperature water. I'm going to start mixing with the wooden spoon. <clears throat> My cat just jumped down and I instinctively just went <clears throat> to try to cover him. His uh, meowing as you can hear but this is a pet house so I'm just gonna let it go <laughs> it's funny the habits you develop all right now at this point instead of fighting with the wooden spoon as you can see I've donned my latex gloves and I'm going to actually mix this by hand to make sure it's well incorporated You basically want to mix it all together until there's no more flour dust on the bottom of your bowl. It takes a little elbow grease, but you'll get there. It becomes kind of a sticky dough. my cat again. We're almost there. Try to get all that flour incorporated. I'm just going to scrape down the sides just to make sure everything is being incorporated into the dough. Okay, so as you can see, no more flour dust. So that's where I stop. I'm just going to make this into a nice round shape. I've got a little bit of the bread flour over a strainer. I'm just going to dust a little flour over the top. Take a little bit of cling film, put that on top. Make sure it's really nicely sealed. Let me take off my gloves. And then I'm going to put just a dish towel over the top. And you want to put this in a warm spot so that it can rise and ferment for up to 24 hours. Now, if you wanted to make this the same day, you could let this rise and ferment for three to four hours. But I think the longer you let it sit, the better the flavor is. So the longer, the better. I'm going to put this in my microwave because that's the warmest spot in the house. And then I'll be back tomorrow to make the baguettes. My dough has been fermenting and rising for about 
I think 17 hours. I left it for 17 hours and this is what it looks like. It's really risen quite a bit and it is very sticky. So I want to pour it out on a floured surface. Keep that flower handy because it, it's going to get sticky as you knead it. See how sticky it is? It smells so good. I'm going to get everything out of that bowl as much as I can. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to put a little bit of flour in the bowl because after we finish kneading it, we are going to put it back in the bowl. So I'll keep that handy over there. Now basically we're going to knead the dough for 10 minutes. If you need to, add more flour as you're kneading, but try to resist the urge to put too much flour into the dough. The reason why we knead the bread is because it helps to form gluten in the dough and gluten helps to build a better structure for your loaf. It also spreads the ingredients around and the yeast around and it helps to add volume. It allows for a good rise. That's why we knead the dough. Now I did read something about no knead bread because I have a recipe for no knead bread as well. And when I started learning about how kneading helps to form gluten in the dough, I thought, well, I have no knead bread and that one rises and that one tastes good and it has a good structure. So what's the deal? <laughs> so I read that apparently because most no knead bread doughs are very wet, which is true, they are pretty wet and with all of that moisture in them it helps the dough to create its own gluten in that way with all the moisture. So whichever way you do it, it still creates gluten. You basically know that you haven't kneaded your dough enough for long enough that is if it doesn't rise it hasn't formed the gluten so it hasn't been given a chance to build a good structure and add volume so that it will rise so usually when you follow a recipe they know how long you should be kneading it but if you you know kind of cheap out <laughs> And it says to knead the dough for 10 minutes and you say, oh, well, after five minutes I've had enough, you know, you may not have a good rise. So just keep that in mind. I just want to show you this. It's sticking, but it's not really coming off on my hand, so I'm not going to put more flour just yet. But if it starts to come off on my hand, then I will add more flour, like it is right now. It's starting to come off on my hand. So I'm just going to add more flour.
Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. I'm going to just form this into a ball. And into my floured bowl it goes. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour over that. Put some cling film on it and let it sit in a warm spot for three hours. My dough has been sitting and rising and fermenting for three hours. And look at it, all of those air bubbles in there. See that? That's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do now is transfer it to a floured surface. I'm going to get some flour on my hands too. I floured my spatula. I'm going to take my dough out. It's very sticky, but that's all right. It's supposed to be. Okay, got that out. Now I'm just going to give it a little roll just to get it into a nice shape where I'll be able to cut it in pieces. So what I want to do is cut this into four pieces. Let me move that out of the way. If you're good at this, you can eyeball it, but I prefer to put them on the scale. When they're even weight, they actually bake better. And I'm a bit of a stickler with how even they are. <laughs> I try to get them, you know, to the gram, which is probably a little too uh, obsessive, but close enough if I can. All right, let's see. I'll put my scale on. Got to set it to grams. Okay, let's see how many grams this one is. It's 295. That one's a little high, 329. 275, a little low. This one feels heavy too. 334. So what I'll do is I'll cut a little bit off the big one, put it here, and a little bit off this one and put it here. Let me see again here. That's about 300. That's about 300. That one's a bit high at 325. And that's about 300. So, you know what? That's okay. I'm going to be okay with that. So, my dough is divided into four. Now I'm going to pre-shape my baguettes. To pre-shape them, I just roll them into a log shape like this. Just a little log shape. All four of them. I'm pre-shaping them because I want the gluten to relax a little bit before I roll them into my baguette shapes. Pre-shaping them, like I said, it helps the gluten to relax and it'll be much easier to roll and shape the dough after the gluten is relaxed. Let me just get this, some flour here. Okay, I don't want them to touch. I'm going to put a little bit of cling film on top of that so that it doesn't dry out and they're going to sit here for 20 minutes. The next step in making these beautiful baguettes is to shape them and proof them. So first I'm just going to move these over to the side so you can see what I'm doing. To 
to proof them, you need a proofing cloth. Now I have this. This is called a baking couche. Couche is a French word and it has a few meanings. The verb coucher means to sleep or to nap. And a couche is also a diaper. <laughs> so I guess when you're coucher, taking a nap, um, maybe you're wearing a nappy, a couche. So it's interesting, you know, the linguistics of it. But basically what you're doing is you're putting your baguettes onto the couche and that's where they're going to sleep while they're proofing for about a half hour. The couche is made of linen and it's quite thick so it's, it provides support for the baguette and it keeps its shape. And because it's breathing, it's not breathing, because the linen breathes, it creates a skin and that creates a crispier crust. So we definitely want to use a couche to make our baguettes and to proof them. If you don't have an official couche, and honestly, they're really not that expensive, but I understand that a lot of people are on a frugal budget. You could always use a linen cloth or a tea towel. I wouldn't recommend using a cotton pillowcase or parchment paper because it, they might not be strong enough to hold the shape of the baguette. So to prepare your couche for proofing, you just load it up with flour to make sure that the dough does not stick to it and really load it up with flour and then just work the flour in. I have a lot of flour on this. Now usually what I do is I will lean the couche up to my, my backsplash, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna show you, I have these, um, juice thingies here. <laughs> I put cling film on them so they don't get fill filled with flour, but basically you need a little bit of a backing for your couche. And you're going to be doing this accordion style here to put all of your baguettes in. It's not working very well right now because I don't have the dough in there, but that's basically what I'm going to do. So I'll just fold this over for now and I'll show you how I shape my baguette. What I'm doing is I'm kind of pulling it apart a little bit, flattening it just a little bit. I'm being very delicate. I want it to be in a rectangle, rectangular shape. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my hands and I'm going to push the air. Let me get some flour on my hands here. Pushing the air into the dough. I'm pushing the air out of the dough into one side of the baguette. Then I'm going to flip it over and roll it. And if it opens like this, all you have to do is seal it. Okay, and some people do roll it out. I don't do that. I just kind of go like this and I make sure that it's even. All right, and I always make sure it's the length of my couche. So we've got the couche here and I'm going to put my first baguette inside the couche. And what you do is you just pull it up like this and then the next baguette will go next to it. All right, I hope you can see that okay. So I'm again forming a rectangle. Pushing the dough down, I still have sticky here. I'm going to push the dough down to get the air all on one side. Pulling it over, giving it a little roll, pinching the seal, making sure that it's really as uniform as possible. 
turning it over and pulling it apart. Well, not pulling it completely apart, but this is how I'm evening out the dough. And I'm placing it in my couche, seam side down. And again, making a little accordion so that it helps to keep its shape. See how that works? All right, my last one here. Some people don't bother with this step, but I was watching um, a professional artisan baker, and she said when you do this, you create um, a better inside where there's a lot more air pockets. So you have those, you know, when you open up a baguette, you have those nice little air pockets in there and it makes the inside fluffier. That's what she said, so I've been doing it that way and I definitely have a nice fluffy baguette on the inside, so why reinvent the wheel, right? Some people just roll it out like Play-Doh. <laughs> okay, these are looking pretty good. There we go. I have a small couche. I can just fit four in there. So I've got my other juice uh, box here that I'm putting up against the couche. So as you can see, I can maybe pull this over. No, I better leave it as is. As you can see, they're very well supported in this couche right now. So I'm gonna leave them like this. I'm gonna cover them with some cling film and I'm gonna leave them for 30 minutes to proof. And while they're proofing, I'm gonna set my oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit to let it warm up so I have a nice hot oven to bake my baguettes. While my baguettes are proofing in the couche, I've preheated my oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see in my oven, I have a very, very, very well used pizza stone. <laughs> Those of you who know me know I have a bit of a pizza obsession, so it's very, very well used. Um, I keep my pizza stone in my oven all of the time because I have a bit of a wonky oven. And it may say that it's at 450, but it might only be at 400. So the addition of the pizza stone in there helps to bring the heat up. On the bottom rack of my oven, I've placed a pan filled with hot water. That's very important to do. You can do that as your oven is preheating. Fill a pan with hot water and put it on the bottom of your stove or on the bottom rack of your stove. The steam from the hot water is going to help the baguettes develop that really nice, crunchy, crispy crust. The proofing time is over and I already started to score my baguettes because that's the next step you want to do, is you want to create four slits diagonally across your baguette. 
scoring creates weak spots in the bread dough and as it bakes oop, I have a little stickiness there as it bakes it will expand in these areas you don't want it to expand and misshape in itself and blow up at the ends so it will expand through these scores here I'm going to move carefully move the couche over because I want to show you my baguette pans these are my baguette pans here they are amazing I love these pans because they keep the shape of the bread you don't have to use a baguette pan you definitely don't have to use it but it really works well to keep the shape I have tried to make baguettes and also ciabatta bread on regular baking pans and I've used foil in between to create sort of that you know that accordion type of thing to keep their shape and it never really worked out well for me I'm not knocking it if that's how you do it great I wish you the best success but I finally decided to buy these baguette pans and when I bought them they came in sets of two and when I got them I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> So I baked my baguettes with both pans just like that and they turned out amazingly and then I realized that oh wait a second there's two of them you're not supposed to use both I tried to bake the next batch of baguettes with just one pan and it didn't really turn out that great so now I'm just not gonna like I said before I'm not reinventing the wheel whatever works I'm gonna keep these as is both pans so I've scored my baguettes and I want to show you just a fun little trick here if I have room I'm opening up the couche this is how you uncouche a baguette this is just an old uh, pizza cutter you know a pizza cutter like that I've, I've just put foil on it and basically I'm putting it on the side of the baguette I'm flipping up the couche like that and into the baguette pan it goes now that's a fancy way of doing it that's how they do it they usually use a board or something like that but you really don't have to do that you could just grab your baguette very carefully and place it on your baguette pan but I just wanted to show you a little fun trick there if you want to be fancy about it <laughs> there we go so at this point I usually either push them in or try to pull them out a little bit I want them to be extremely even so now they're ready to go into the oven I just wanted to mention something about how you clean your couche basically what you do is you shake it all out and then you hang it up and let it dry because it is a bit moist from the baguettes and when it's dry if there's any little pieces of dough on it you can pick it off and just fold it up and put it in a plastic bag and put it away in a safe spot most bakers don't wash their couches but if you really feel the need to wash your couche you can put it in your washing machine but don't use detergent because if you use detergent guess what your baguettes will taste like so just maybe use a little bit of baking soda or a little bit of vinegar put it on a short wash and let it air dry okay. So you want to cook your baguettes for 30 to 35 minutes but the first time that you bake them keep an eye on them because you want them to have a nice golden brown color so depending on your oven you might have to bake them 25 minutes or maybe 35 minutes these look great I wish I could share the fragrance that I have in my home right now with you I'm going to let these baguettes sit in the pans for about five minutes and then I'm going to transfer them to a cooling rack for just a little bit 
These are best eaten the same day that you bake them. I have yet to find a good way to store them so that they keep with their crunchy crust. I've tried putting them in paper bags, wrapping them in foil, uh, putting them in cling film in the fridge. It just seems like the next day they lose, lose their crunchy crust. So for the video I made four, but normally I would make half of the recipe and make two so that we can enjoy these the same day that I bake them. These are so amazing. And yes, it's a little time consuming, but it's very easy to make and there are so little ingredients. I hope that you try these. And if you do, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Until next time, my friends. Bye.